Hello drummers and other creatures, this is part two of my uh, technical primer for Afrobeat drumming. Uh, in part one, I had the whole preamble explaining the concept, so go, go and watch that, and I showed you a bunch of bass drum patterns. Uh, today we're going to look at a bunch of snare drum patterns. Um, so I would recommend you check out the first video, but um, I don't know, you can just watch this if you like. Um, as I said before, I think learning this style of music will give you a lot of interesting coordination. I think it can help to develop the kind of coordination you need for playing sort of conventional straight ahead swing. Um, there's a relationship mechanically between the hand patterns that we're going to do. Um, and it's fun, it's a cool musical style and partly I think it'd be nice to introduce Afrobeat to more people uh, if that happens by accident. Now, uh, again, go and watch the other video. We've got a hand pattern uh, that involves playing the ride cymbal on one and a two and a three and a four and a, which is an eighth and two sixteenths. We've got the hi-hat on the ands. That's our kind of home pattern. It sounds like this. Now, if you did your homework, you should be able to, ooh, let's take this off. You should be able to do the bass drum pattern that I'm going to use throughout this series of exercises. I'm just gonna keep the bass drum the same, the snare drum pattern is gonna change. So the bass is gonna play on the one E. And we're going to be playing a two beat bar. So we're just gonna be going one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one and a two 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 and a. Okay, so again, this is establishing the baseline pattern that will remain the same throughout the exercises. The only thing that I'm going to vary today in this video is what my snare drum hand is doing. Okay, so this is our baseline pattern. And if you're not going to check out the first video, uh, you need to be like super comfortable doing that before adding the snare drum, in my opinion. You wanna get so that that flows, it's easy, you can just turn it on and turn it off at will. Uh, however slowly, doesn't matter. I would play it as slowly as required for you to play it comfortably and consistently. As slow as this, if you like. or even slower. I'm gonna be saying the word slow a lot. Okay, now, as I said, we're gonna vary the snare drum patterns and I've got a little sequence and I'm gonna demonstrate each one and, and show you some of the considerations uh, related to how that fits in with the, what, what the right hand is doing. But the first pattern we're gonna play is the snare just on the two. So we've got one e and a two, one e and a two, just the two, okay? Next, we're gonna put the snare on the two E, so we're gonna have one E and a, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a. After that, this is more or less the same as the bass, just with one extra pattern. After that, we're gonna have the two and, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a. Then we're gonna have the snare on the two and the R. One E and a, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a. Then we're going to do the two E and the R, missing out the and. So we've got this. One E and a, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a. And finally, we're going to do two E and. One E and a, one E and a, one E and a, one E and a. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what to expect. Let's start off with just the snare on the two. This should be 
Again, pretty straightforward for you uh, if you've got the, the other bits going on. Let's have a listen. Now, uh, I went into this in the other video, so I'm gonna try not to say this too much, but really take your time with each stage of this, make yourself feel very comfortable before you move on to the next one, or at least be a little bit aware uh, uh, to what degree you're feeling comfortable with each thing. There are some people like mixing up a bit more, so I'm not saying to be really anal about it and, and worried, but allow yourself to get relaxed and familiar with each stage, because that's the thing that will let you play this naturally. Well it's, well, it's not natural, is it? But to program yourself. Anyway, let's move on. Next snare drum pattern, the two and the and. Ah, oh, no, the next pattern, sorry, it was gonna be the two and the E. What am I thinking? Here we go. Not that the order matters really that much. Uh, next, we are going to do the two and the and on the snare. and the R. Next, we've got the 2E and the R. Now again, remember, and this applies to the 2E as well, that we have a snare drum note that falls in between the, the ride notes. And, you know, this might take a little bit of slow uh, work. Again, the previous video kind of goes into detail, the same applies to the snare as to the bass, but just to remind you that if you find that you can't do it, and I'm just sort of barreling along with this a little bit, if you're doing it really a lot slower, you might find that you want to just practice the hands on their own and get that coordination right, especially a pattern like this can feel a little bit tricky because we've got two, two E and a. Uh. Two E and A uh, against the symbol which is going to and uh. So we've got um, a sort of slightly uh, asymmetrical type of coordination happening. Is, is that the right? You, you'll see what I mean. And if you find a, a, any of these patterns tricky, break it down to just the trickiest components of the thing and just focus on that. So, you know, I'm, I'm sort of assuming this might be a fairly common sticking point in this particular pattern. So just the two hands at first. And then you might want to put the hi-hat foot in there as well, which is on the, on the second of those ride notes. And if you do find yourself sticking at that point and you have to do that very, very slowly and methodically, there is nothing wrong with you. It's the same for everybody. Yeah, it really is. There's nothing wrong with you if you have to break that down and do it really slowly. If you learn how to work through that, learning becomes a lot easier and you get a certain patience with it as well. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna demonstrate the pattern as played. And the last snare drum option will be uh, 
two E and, three snare drums in a row. And again, that has a similar uh, trickiness in the coordination, possibly. And again, whether you've played this or not before, or anything like this, you might just be able to do it. That's fine, great but you might not be able to do it and you might have to break it down again, painstakingly slowly build it up again. But if you're patient with it, your brain will be programmed and you have a new piece of coordination there. So please, patience is a virtue in, in, in drum practice as far as I'm concerned. Not that I really have any, you know, that's another struggle. But anyway, so again, just the hands. And then we're going to add the hi-hat. And sometimes doing like eight repetitions of a thing like that might be enough to trigger the body to be able to do what you want it to do. Sometimes you might have to spend eight minutes or eight days, I don't know. But do that and then we put the whole pattern together. Okay, so we've got these um, certain number of patterns, one, two, three, four, five, five, six patterns. I lose count now. Um, the object of the exercise is to be able to play a bunch of uh, the patterns in sequence. In other words, I'm, well, what I'm going to demonstrate now is I'm going to play each pattern four repetitions and then move straight to the next pattern. So what you're aiming to do is to get to that point, right? That you can do four or maybe eight repetitions of each pattern, then smoothly transition from one pattern to the next, and then sit and cycle that for as long as it takes for you to really relax into it, okay? So step one is just get each individual pattern feeling good, and step two is to teach yourself to play the patterns in sequence. And that might entail Again, depending, everyone is different, and if it takes you longer and you think your neighbor is doing it more quickly, it does not matter, doesn't matter. But you might take two patterns, just play one after the other, alternate between two patterns, and then alternate between another two patterns, and try and just get used to doing that, uh, and then slowly, slowly string it together so you can do them all one after the other, okay? Uh, but I'm just gonna jump into that because, you know, we, we, there's only so much time in the day, but here we go. So I'm going to play each pattern four times. Let's see if I get it right. Why do I keep crashing? I'm annoying myself with that now. Okay. Now, the idea is not to just do that and then stop, but is to then sit with that sequence for as long as you like. Just set your timer and do that for five minutes. You know, you could do it with the metronome if you like, if you're used to using a metronome. If you're not used to using a metronome, maybe don't do that with the metronome until you've really let it settle in. Um, but then you start to notice, oh, this is, feeling good, I know that I could just sit down and play that sequence without having to go back and like work out the individual patterns. And when you first do this, you might think, oh wow, I've, I've done the sequence of the four of each, I can play that blah blah blah, and you've had a nice practice session, and tomorrow you come back, and then some of the patterns at least, you have to work on individually again. Because it's a progress uh, that works uh, through, I don't know, it's like a ratcheting thing, you know, you know a bit, then you forget a bit, then you know a bit more, then you forget, you know, it can go like that. Sometimes it all goes very smoothly, and that's always pleasant, but it's not necessary. And again, uh, I hear people telling me I'm a fast learner, I'm a slow learner, but none of that makes any difference because this is a process that over a period of years, everybody's more or less the same uh, 
given consistent, regular paying attention and work, to be honest, in, in my opinion, not that I know anything. But um, we've got that sequence. When you can do four of each, uh, then you can then do two of each and then even one of each, yeah? So that you're moving between each pattern on each sort of uh, a two beat bar, right? Now, the uh, end result that we're working towards, which I'm gonna demonstrate, is to be able to improvise, meaning you're gonna keep the same ride pattern, the same hi-hat, the same bass drum, but you're going to improvise the snare drum options based on the patterns that we've um, learned today. And then you might even find that uh, other spontaneous things happen, which is fine, let it be. You know, just getting your body used to doing and, and whatever it wants, right? Whatever feels good for the music that you're playing. Here we go. So I'm gonna finish off by showing you an improvisation of the snare drum patterns. Let's see how it goes. That's it, you get the idea. My left hand decided to do a few uh, one R's as well, but that's okay. Like I say, if some spontaneous snare drum variations come up, that's cool. Your focus will be to keep nice consistent ride, nice consistent hi-hat, nice consistent bass drum, and to then have that sense. And again, this is a sort of mythical uh, idea, independence. Uh, it's not independence in my opinion. Uh, I, I'm, well, it's not really my opinion, but there, there is a, a certain consensus among certain people that it's not really independence that we're working towards, but it's about assembling a vocabulary of different patterns of coordination. Uh, that's a whole philosophical argument, I suppose, for another time. But that's that, that's the snare drum technical primer. Now, the object of all of this is to, well, apart from anything else, ah, I, I forgot that again, God, I'm the world's worst businessman. Um, the object of all of this, to some extent at least, is to let everybody know that I'm a drum teacher and I'm offering drum lessons to people who would like help with their drumming, believe it or not, and I'm available on the internet. So if you check the description box below, you can find out how to get in touch with me and we can have a bit of a chat if you're looking for somebody to help you one-on-one -on -one with your drumming skills. Uh, the other object of this whole process is uh, I feel like I'd like to disseminate some information to the wider world just for the sake of maybe uh, adding my spin on what it takes to learn the drums and, and hopefully if there's people who don't want direct one-on-one -on -one drum lessons, they can still find some sort of like proper valuable benefit from my videos just um, I don't know, it makes me feel good to share the things that I know. But anyway, that was my little advert. Um, so I'm going to um, come back to this topic and I, I think I've got another maybe two videos to do. Uh, at least uh, one more where I'm going to show you how to then vary the ride and I'm going to then discuss uh, how we combine all the elements of this little package of technical exercises, the technical primer on Afrobeat drumming. So we have bass drum variations, we have snare drum variations, we're gonna add some ride variations, we're gonna show uh, how to mix those up, and at some point I'm also going to sort of bring it back to the hi-hat and look at that. I'm, I'm not sure whether that will be uh, sort of interlaced into the uh, next couple of videos or whether I might do that as a separate topic. Let's see, I need to make stuff. So um, I'll, I'll have a think about what's the best way to do it. Anyway, I really appreciate you watching this up to now, if you're still here. Um, again, please uh, remember to subscribe to my channel, smash the like button and do all those good things, share my videos if you think anybody will find them interesting. And uh, I really enjoy hearing from people. So if you found this useful or useless, if you'd like me to cover some other topic, if you have any direct questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll do what I can to respond in a sort of useful way. Now, I think that wraps this one up for today and uh, it's time for you to go off and practice, I reckon.